A small choir is undertaking a monumental challenge. They are Yazidi women from northern Iraq. Driven from their homes and sold to fighters from the so-called Islamic State, so many of their voices were silenced. But there are survivors. And as Crystal Gomancing explains, they're determined to keep their culture alive. It's an attention-grabbing start to a performance marked by its simplicity and grace. They're bringing the music of the Yazidi people to new audiences. Dancing for baronesses and lords, but over the past week they have performed for the Prince of Wales and at Oxford University. When I do our um, music and dancing, I feel happy and I'm, I'm proud uh, of our music. Preserving the religious and country music of Yazidi people is a project of the Amar Foundation. For eight months, they have been recording and cataloging the songs. The charity provides health care to those in displacement camps in Iraq. The music project is helping survivors with their mental well-being. As a method of psychotherapy, it helps us to digest our difficult situation and atrocities that were undertaken against us. The Yazidi people were attacked with unimaginable brutality in 2014. ISIS fighters descended on Sinjar in northwestern Iraq. The UN called it a coordinated effort by ISIS to destroy non-believers. Girls and young women such as Rinas were sold as sex slaves, men were murdered. Through a translator, she says she wants to go back home to Sinjar to go to school and to keep performing. I feel very happy when I dance, when I sing. The 19-year-old has a sweetness about her, a quality Baroness Nicholson of Winterbourne, the host of the event, is drawn to. They've come here to show people what can be done and to say, we're Yazidi, we're alive, we're doing music, look after us, support us. The smiles and laughter a sign of a successful trip the 10 young ladies will soon be back in displacement camps in Iraq, but they leave having shared something transformative. Crystal Gamancing, Global News, London.